the theme of this uh, conference, uh, when I look at it, is uh, very good because it is the uh, refugee on science, technology, innovation, entrepreneurship for sustainable uh, development, which is uh, uh, sustainable development is the key in all the processes that uh, many uh, countries are doing today. And also the theme is uh, consistent with the Kenya Vision 2030 and uh, sustainable development goals, which also focuses on uh, or recognizes the importance of research, innovation, and the technology. So, um, uh, research in the university is uh, very key, apart from teaching, I think according to the University Act, uh, apart from uh, teaching, there is the aspect of uh, research. And uh, research, um, we give the outputs through uh, conferences like uh, this one. So I'm looking forward to um, to hearing what we have because from the program there are many people who are going to present. So um, the other thing I would like to see is because we have seen a lot of activities uh, research taking place in the university and one of them is uh, currently um, the university as the scientific and ethic review committee. Um, this committee was attended by Nakosti and now we are able to look at the research proposals. So that is the something positive uh, that is showing that we are growing as an institution in terms of uh, research. Before people are going to have their proposals looked at in other institutions, but now we can do it. The accreditation was in uh, March 2022, and I think it is a positive uh, development. So, um, for me again, I want to join my colleague to welcome all of us, and we are hoping that for the next two days we will have a very successful uh, conference. The, the, we, are, we are having a very, uh, a very uh, vibrant debate on university education. Uh, not just university education, but education uh, reforms in Kenya and what the university should actually uh, be doing. So, what I would like to do is to highlight that uh, besides the discussions of financing of university education, there are quite a, a number of other developments that are taking place with regard to science, technology, and innovation. We are in the process of doing these policies across the board. Um, and uh, we are doing that not just because we need to do the policies, but because the world is changing and it's changing very rapidly. It is changing rapidly with regard to the issues we are all aware of. Energy is a big issue. Uh, climate change is now a big issue. Uh, we also have the issue of the, the, the digitalization and moving the digital world. And these are shaping careers in a very rapid way. So universities are increasingly moving in the direction of being uh, entrepreneurial and responding to these changing environments. And ourselves, we cannot also uh, be uh, left behind. So, so even as we share uh, the ideas we have, that we have been working on in the last uh, one or two years, we have to be cognizant of the things that are happening and things that we have to address our, our system. As a university, we are also in the middle of that uh, shift as a key player in the higher education sector. And we continue to work on our, on, on our, on our ecosystem, particularly with regard to developing an ecosystem that can support and work with the science and uh, uh, technology park, the Denon Climat Science and Technology Park. So, there are a couple of, of developments we got to launch. Uh, this year, in partnership with the uh, Consa Technopolis uh, Development uh, Authority, we participated in the 39th Conference of International Vision of Science Park, Park for this area of innovation. And um, at the same time, I uh, presented a bill that we can host the 41st uh, conference of IASP and leaders of innovation, and we were granted that uh, uh, that uh, right. So we will be for 
that reason, we have to now prepare ourselves as a great opportunity for us to look at our, how our university education sector fits and supports the innovation uh, sector, how we are able to link up with the industries. And we we'll also have the opportunity in the next two years to learn from um, other parts of the world where this is a huge conference. People in the industries, people coming from academia, people from uh, science parks and so on, uh, innovation centers, incubators. When they congregate here in 2024, we should take that opportunity to learn from them. And can only do that if we start uh, continually working on these things and building the partnerships. Um, we are also at an advanced stage of uh, discussing establishment of uh, some kind of uh, a platform, research innovation platform in this master, where we can more or less create a space where scientists, uh, entrepreneurs, and researchers in Africa can come and discuss common Kenyan problems and common African problems and then work on them to get solutions that can then be scaled up across the continent. And we hope to launch that uh, uh, in the next uh, one year, or in 2023. Uh, we, in the, in the period also, we've been able to develop our science and technology part. We have had a significant progress in uh, attracting partner institutions, and I mark one of the leading ones is the uh, semiconductor Limited, which is where they are operating uh, within our facility and employing over uh, 18. This kind basically our former students and so on. And uh, through that platform that we have created, we are also able to now support research in the semiconductor uh, sector. Um, we are looking at creating such similar platforms uh, in other areas and then uh, uh, creating partnerships also, not just now ourselves, but partnerships with other markets. And I think uh, we will continue again exploring, exploring that route of creating the independent centers because it gives us these uh, researchers opportunities to really develop partnerships with other researchers around the world. Um, develop uh, linkages with people who can support research, create opportunities for linkages in the industry, create opportunities for our undergraduate students, for our master's students, and so on. We continue supporting that, and uh, we are very happy with what uh, uh, the what our, our, our staff in those centers are creating. Finally, <clears throat> for our students and those of, uh, of you who are interested in uh, um, graduate programs, we have re revised, we have reviewed and revised our supervision guidelines to basically make sure that our students can actually always complete their programs on schedule. And those, those guidelines are now uh, are in, in operation, they are in use, and they are the ones that we are now following. And we think that that's going to be a major reform, and something that did it could also, we also have. I think before long, it's a way of uh, uh, bringing efficiency into that sector. And um, without doubt, I know it will have huge impact across, uh, across the country. Uh, finally, um, we, have, um, we have also been working on the establishment of the Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, and this is a um, uh, an institution that is going to be established in the in, in, in Machako area in the Consum Technopolis area and it will focus on only masters and PhD degrees and these are in technology areas. Why is this important? This is important because it's a, a unique institution on the sky and it's going to present a lot of opportunities for and platforms for partnering with industry. It has to get very good government support. And the government is already committed to that. So we, we are starting it off as a constitution master college of this university. Um, and even as we do that, it's going to have an impact on 
the university, the general demand university as well, because we must change quite a lot of our systems as we reform and arrange them in this uh, new agenda. So I'm happy to also appreciate the uh, support we are getting from the Center for uh, Biomass and Energy Studies. This is this commander so some engineer who is just here. So thank you for for its uh, sponsorship for this. And also from KFS. Is there anybody from KFS here? Yeah? Uh, so yeah. So in those months I Oh, um, um, without doubt that we are going to have a, a good time. Uh, we establish our, uh, our friendships, share what has been happening in the last uh, two years, and uh, create new energy to be able to build uh, even stronger partnerships as we go into the future. So thank you very much. Professor Ikua. Professor Ikua, if you are I'm checking behind to see if you are all right. <laughs> the problem of partial. It's always good to have an in-person in person meeting because in the in-person meeting you know where the person is. <laughs> but a partial one you don't really know where the image is. This conference uh, has at, uh, attracted 61 presentations. We had uh, a total of 10 institutions uh, participating, either virtually or physically here. We had Machakos University. We had uh, jo Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga. We had Kirdi. We had Strathmore. We had KU. We had uh, Jaikwat. Uh, we had um, uh, Gifu. Uh, we had TH uh, Wildau and, our, and our, ourselves are making up the 11th. So we appreciate you and uh, this is uh, a conference that also embodies the vision and the mission of DICUT because we desire even going forward to continue being a premier university excelling in quality education research and also uh, knowledge transfer and it is in this kind of pro, 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 platform that we can uh, be able to promote knowledge transfer and uh, knowledge dissemination the sharing of ideas that can help improve the quality of research that we are doing we've come to the end of the uh, sixth uh, Denang Kimadi International Conference so I just have a, some very few uh, remarks to make. Most of what uh, was to be said has been presented in the papers uh, and presentations have been made. But um, nonetheless, I would like to start by also extending my appreciation to the organizing team. Um, we are organizing things in a different way. The last time we organized a conference, it was an in-person conference. Now we are organizing uh, with the uh, need in a complex way because we have to take care of people wherever uh, they are, and that's not easy. So we have the keynote speakers, um, a number of them. Professor uh, Saki is here. Professor Hassog is here. We have the. Uh, Dr. Mwanza and Professor Ikua and uh, Professor Nita also. So we really appreciate your presentation. Um, a figure of 61 presentations really, you not know, a small number, that's a significant a number. And uh, given that we are just coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, I think that's really a remarkable achievement. So. Uh, well done, organizers. Um, you may note that uh, this is the 10th, we are, we are getting close to the 10th anniversary of Dedan Kemad University. We were shattered uh, on 14th December 2012. So we are just about to celebrate our 10th year as a full fledged uh, uh, university. And uh, that means we have gone through 10 years of building the institution. And uh, uh, when you started, the challenge really was, how do you 
how do you build a university? Do you build it from scratch? So it was very clear we had to build the human resource. And also, very importantly, we had to also build a culture of excellence in teaching, research, and extension work. We can now look back and uh, uh, see what we have gained uh, through the human resource. Most of the departments that, uh, not most, virtually all the departments have uh, the critical staff uh, complement of lecturers with PhD qualifications now moving uh, to senior ranks of the university, senior lecturers, associate professors, uh, and so on. We did not have that number uh, when we started, uh, but now I think on average, probably the least endowed department has at least seven PhD uh, holders, essentially from zero when we, uh, we started. That has been through the, the partnerships. And uh, um, it's not usual to have, to hear somebody like Professor Sasaki, who has more or less contributed to uh, almost close to 80% of the PhDs <laughs> in that uh, uh, department of, of mechanical, mechatronic and electrical engineering. We also have Professor Hazog here. These are individuals who have come out and uh, supported the institution, and they're always here with us. Uh, and now with Professor Saki, we also have now Professor Nita. So, uh, so they are not just the uh, scholars, but they are, as I said before, they are part of a family, and we like to continue growing uh, growing that uh, family. As part of building that culture, we also have been working towards having PhD, masters and PhD program for every undergraduate program that we have. And the idea is a student should um, have the aspiration to move to the higher degrees. Even if they don't move, they should understand what happens there and they should also be inspired to do what they are doing uh, in a better way. We are now looking at problems that are global. Uh, we, are, we are looking at uh, the sustainable development uh, goals, which are helping us address a global problem. We can no longer work in silos. It's really a question of working uh, together. You have seen the issue of the society uh, 5.2, as has been conceptualized in Japan, and as a way of addressing the uh, sustainable development goals and going beyond that. So uh, this kind of conference helps us build the partnerships. And I raise that because as we go forward, as, 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 as uh, university people, as researchers in Kenya and all that, we must know that the strength of the research and the strength of the impact of what we do is going to be uh, deflected in the strength of our networks. It is not just local networks, but international uh, networks. And this kind of conference enables us uh, to do that. So, uh, so once again, mine is really an appreciation. Probably this is my last, uh, uh, my last conference as a vice chancellor. I will look forward to retiring soon. So I'm very happy to see uh, what we have achieved, that we are able to get uh, uh, to this point. In this conference, uh, we decided to have uh, an additional item. Uh, over and above listening to presentations and re response to questions, uh, we decided to identify the best uh, young researchers award, and that one was origin original idea of Professor Sasaki and Professor Kioni here. And uh, yeah, there was a criteria to which we followed the guidelines uh, in identifying the best uh, young researchers award for this year. So I think what I'll do is that maybe I'll call out the name and uh, I'll ask Professor Sasaki to come and give out the award and uh, thereafter maybe make us have a small award, right? Okay, okay. So this, this year, Professor Minoru Sasaki Young Researchers Award uh, goes to uh, Juan Gabriel Chiarie. Uh, and the title of the paper is A Time Domain Refractometry for Electric Fans. Congratulations, and uh, so uh, I hope you will be an excellent researcher in Kenya, not limited in Kenya, in the world. Thank you.
this is the first step, and uh, please continue to it. This is this award is meaningful, encourage the uh, Kenyan student and uh, Kenyan young researchers. This is also my honor to hand you uh, this award. So congratulations. Thank you. I received Professor Minoru Sasaki Young Research Award, and I'm very grateful for that. To me, the award felt like a challenge. Uh, I was awarded for work that is ongoing, and that means that more work needs to be put in the current research that I'm working on. Uh, I would like to encourage upcoming researchers and uh, students to continue putting more efforts and their work will give, uh, they will have fruits for their good work. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.